Well, now that we've seen a little bit about working with things like checkboxes, let's take a little bit of time to examine how to create our own drop-down list. Now, you've seen these, of course, as you've seen just about every form element that I've been discussing up to this point. And, you know, everyone that we'll be discussing as well, once you see them in action, you'll say, oh, yes, of course, I recognize that. I've had to do this on a number of occasions. Well, as we saw, Working with something like a checkbox is a, a great thing to do, and it, it allows our end user, our audiences, to actually have a number of different choices that they wish to work with. But oftentimes, you can work with something like a drop-down box, a drop-down list, as I should say. So as you'll see here, we're going to introduce a new tag, and this is actually called the select tag. And in the select tag, you can give a number of different um, sort of attributes. But in this particular attribute, what we're going to do is, similarly to what we did with some of the earlier ones, we'll name this particular drop-down list according to its values. So for example, if we're still working with the fruit scenario that I had initially, I'll say, look, all the elements inside of this drop-down list that I'm creating are going to be, you know, articles that belong to this fruit. Now before we do anything else, and as I usually tell all my uh, students to do, is when you introduce a tag that can be closed, go about closing it right away. That way we don't actually have any problems understanding exactly um, what is being open, what's being closed, but more importantly we won't forget to close that a little bit later on. All right, so now that we're inside here, certainly you could uh, press tab and indent these elements if it makes it easier for you to read. Really not a problem to do so. So let's introduce yet another new tag, and it's called option. And when we have an option, as you'll see here, we're going to define a value for that option. In other words, we can actually give it a value that's going to be visible and um, that's going to be described in just a second as we close our option tag. But here, these values will you know, be essential when we're sending this information to, again, um, either a PHP script or an ASP script or some other sort of intermediary programming language that's going to help us to um, extract this information when we need it. So anyways, if I wanted to, I could say Apple. And as I close the opening tag, inside we're going to actually say Apple. And you'll notice now I'm going to close this option tag. Very simple, easy to do. If I wanted to, I could copy this. So I'll just right click, I'll copy, and I'll paste in the information. And here instead of Apple, you know, you can pick any of your other favorite fruits or something along those lines. So I'm just going to say uh, pear and I'll do the same thing in here. And I will come back here and paste in another value, another option tag as we saw being done earlier. You know, if I wanted to introduce kiwi or something like that, I could do the same thing here. And again, it, it really is a matter of how many of these you want to be adding, and, you know, it's completely up to you. So, you know, if I came in here and said plum and added something here as well, like a plum, and then I could say Command S will save this file. And let's go back to Firefox. And now what you'll see inside of Firefox is this, you know, very defaulted little drop-down box. And when you click on them, check it out. The first one on our list was Apple. We had pear, and we had kiwis, and we had plums. So if we wanted to, eventually, when we introduce the submit button into our form elements, this information would be taken, and um, then you could use it in whatever way that you want with conjunction with some other you know, uh, the scripting languages like PHP, as I mentioned, or ASP, among other things. Now, oftentimes, however, sometimes you'll have sort of a, uh, how should I say, a push of some kind. 
uh, in magic tricks, you'll often see this where uh, the magician is sort of uh, forcing a card on you, pick a card, any card, but the you know ace of spade is the one that seems to be uh, pushed out in front. Well, anyways, if you wanted to introduce something where you had an element in this list, so one of these options that we have here would be made the first selected option, the one that is available by default, and people could change it if they wished. All you would really have to do, for example, let's say somebody really likes pairs, all they would really have to do is to introduce another attribute to the option tag. And in this case, it would be an attribute called selected. And as you'll see here, I'll just say equals selected item. We'll close that particular element. And now if I Command S or Control S or File Save, as we see here, and we'll switch back over to Firefox. And when I do so, let's take a look at what's going on in here. Well, I'll have to double check what we've done just to make sure. Might have to close this and go back to my desktop here and open it. There you go. I just had to shut it down and open it up again. But as you can see, pair, the second item on my list, is the one that was selected by default, which uh, just goes to show you uh, that when you are working with the selected elements, as I mentioned in this particular example, you have our selected file, tell it what it is and we said we want pair to be the selected option so that's working with drop-down lists and these drop-down lists will be an indispensable part of how you make your forms work for you and how successful those form elements will actually end up being